One of the biggest differentiators between Accumulate and other blockchain protocols is the ability to manage your security over time without having to expose your private keys or make a new account. This feature is made possible by Accumulate's unique hierarchy of keys, which includes key books, prioritized key pages that are contained within key books, and either keys or URLs that are contained within key pages. When you first create an ADI, you can specify any number of key books that belong to your account. These can be normal key books that give the account holder the freedom to do anything within their account, uh, or assign external key books belonging to other ADIs with freedom to do similar things. You can also specify a manager key book that is more suited for automation and only has the ability to accept or reject transactions initiated by the owner. Delegated transactions that involve external key books and managed transactions that involve manager key books will be separate topics to cover in later videos, so we'll only focus on, uh, today on the general key architecture. So when the ADI initiates a transaction, its owner selects a key page from the relevant key book. Signatures of transactions that originate from an ADI are authorized against the account's relevant key book. Each key page specifies M of N, uh, where M is a number of unique authorized signatures required to approve transactions, also called a signature threshold, and N is the total number of keys on that key page. So how would this M of N authorization scheme look in real life? Well, a one of two authorization scheme means that one signature out of two possible signatures on a key page is required to approve a transaction. This could be useful for a joint bank account where the signature of either partner is enough to access the funds. A two of two authorization scheme means that both keys in the key page are required to approve a transaction. This could be applied to an automated spending control in which a computer program with access to a key will only sign for a transaction below a certain dollar amount. Uh, a two of three authorization scheme could be useful for escrow transactions between two parties uh, with a third party acting as an intermediary. So multi-stig transactions like these can be useful for a number of real world applications, but there's limited flexibility on the blockchain when it comes to modifying these transactions. If you wanna change the M of N authorization scheme, um, or take somebody off your multi-sig transaction if they're absent or misbehaving, or maybe add somebody else to increase your security, it can be really inconvenient and potentially unsafe to do so on a typical blockchain. However, you can manage your security over time using prioritized key pages in Accumulate. Each key page is assigned a different priority level, where a key page with a higher priority can make changes to any key page with a lower priority. For example, a key page with priority zero can change the M of N signature requirements of itself and any key page of lower priority, including key pages one, two, three, and so on. Because key pages can also contain URLs that point to the key book of an external ADI, a key page of higher priority can also modify who has administrative access to a certain key page. What does flexibility in key management ultimately allows you to do is to replicate virtually any single or multi-party financial operation on a blockchain while making these operations more secure, more decentralized, and more transparent.